turn that down? What's the matter? Don't you like music? Please. I just heard about the fight. Did you see it? On television? Don't have a set in here. Come off it, Ada. You know what I mean. Between Elliot and Chandler. No, nope. didn't see it. I wonder if I could talk to you alone. Look, business is kind of slow right now, but it'll pick up any minute. The lunch bunch will be in. This is important. Okay, sit down over there. I'll join you in a minute. Here, Ray, eh? let me give you another refill. Thanks, Ada. Yeah. Then you won't interrupt my important conversation. Okay, Leslie, I'm all ears. Ada, this is serious. Whether you know it or not, Elliot almost killed Chandler last night. Right here on the waterfront, right outside your door. Well, what do you want from me? Why did he do it? He must have, he must know something. He must have found out something about Chandler to set him off. So? What was it? Well, how should I know? Did you ever talk to Elliot about Chandler? I never talked to Chandler about Chandler, if I could help it. Did you ever see them together? Not that I remember. But he was in here a lot, wasn't he? Elliot or Chandler? Don't be obtuse. You know that Elliot doesn't frequent waterfront bars. I'm talking about Chandler. Yeah, okay. He was in here two or three times, trying to get real chummy, talking about the good old days. What good old days? That's all I'd like to know. Anyway, I told him to get lost. The less I'm reminded of my husband and the scum he brought around here, the better. Did he talk to anybody else when he was here? Not him. He's a loner. I guess that's why he tried to make up to me. But when he was here, there were other people around, right? I suppose so. Why? What's the big deal? Did you ever call him Forrest? Jack Forrest? I never called him anything. In the first place, I didn't know him from Adam. Not until he told me he was the same guy that was cooking up some kind of a deal with you way back when. He's the one who reminded me his name was Jack Forrest. But did you call him that when other people were around? What's the sweat, Leslie? Why the third degree? I have to know. You can save your breath. As far as I know, you're the only other person who knows that Chandler and Forrest are the same guy. Good. Let's keep it that way. Um, suppose I ask you a question. What's this Chandler or Forrest got to do with you? Nothing, Ada. He just works for me, that's all. That's enough. You hired him at a time when you were laying other people off. You know, I never wanted to know what you two were yakking about years ago in the back room there. But now you've made me curious. What's he got on you, Leslie? Forget it, Ada. Just forget it. So, Elliot, I'll phone you right after I talk to him. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Thank you. I've got to run. Steven? Leslie? Elliot! about the fight. I certainly hope you're all right. Oh, thank you. They say you really pasted him, put him in the hospital. But they uh, didn't say what caused it. Do you think they'd want to know? I'd like to know, Elliot. After all, he works for me at the mill. That's right. You did hire him, didn't you? And I can fire him. Now, I showed you his personnel record. Was there something in it, something no. I should know about? After you made your magnanimous gesture and let me see it, nothing showed up. I see. Well, I don't mean to butt in. I suppose you have your reasons. Well, as a matter of fact, I do have my reasons, then. I found out that your employee has another name, Jack Forrest. It's the same name he was using while he was serving time for criminal assault. Now, you've got something to tell them. I can't stay very long. I've got to go to work. Thank you for coming, Rodney. Well, will you help Norman? Huh. I asked you here so we could discuss it. What is there to discuss? You know Norman's broke. Either you're willing to help him or, or you're not. Not a very good salesman, are you, Rodney? Why should I have to try and sell you on the idea of helping your own grandson? 
Because you wanted me to help him. Okay, Grandfather, I'll, I'll sit up and I'll bark for you. I'll beg if, if that's what I have to do. <laughs> I'm touched by your humility. But aren't you exaggerating? As I recall, Norman has enough pride and stubbornness to withstand a great deal of difficulty. What is that supposed to mean? Are you waiting for the pressure to tear him apart? Is that what you want to see? You want to see him brought to his knees? Oh, sit down, Rodney. Let's talk this over sensibly. No, I'm sorry. I've got to go to work. Listen, I'm not asking you to finance a Hawaii scheme of mine, or pay my gambling debts, or even buy Norman a new car. His wife is seriously ill, and he's broke. Finished? No, I'm, I'm not finished. Just one more thing. I know you've never approved of Norman's choice for a wife. Well, that's your problem. Because Rita's the one person who loved him completely and unselfishly, and the one person who's never hurt him. But I happen to believe that Norman's marriage should be preserved at all costs. I happen to believe that Rita is an excellent wife for Norman, that they obviously belong together. <laughs> Unlike your father, I can recognize when two people are well matched. Well, then why do you have me come all the way over here if you had already decided to help him? I've got to go to work. Rodney, if I mail Norman the money, you know what he'll do with it. Yes, I know. I just can't give it to him in the ordinary way. He'd return it. Why don't you stay to lunch? Perhaps together we could determine the best way to handle it. Well, I, I don't think I can. It's but... already to be served. I'll tell Mary you're joining us. You know, Rodney, you're absolutely right about what I owe Norman. I feel some regrets about you, too. Yes, it's unfortunate that I didn't enter more actively into your life. Especially when you were married to Betty. That's when you needed my help and support. Instead of your father's destructive indifference. Yes, things would have been quite different if I hadn't been confined to my hospital bed. Ah. You wait right here, Rodney. I'll find Mary. That's a relief. For a minute, I was afraid you were Mrs. Cord's husband, which would meant the portrait I'm doing would no longer be a surprise gift for Mr. Cord. And I'm Rodney Harrington. Barrett Costa. the continuing story of Peyton Place. I wouldn't think of sending her away. Not now. Why not now? Because she might dig up something on Chandler that you tried to beat out of him? I'll just forget you said that. Don't forget it. Answer it. If I were you, I'd have had enough of myself by now. As you get older, you're going to get less beautiful and more greedy. And no matter what you grab for yourself, it'll never be enough. <laughs> <laughs> 